Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take this opportunity to present you with another word of encouragement. Well, just in case you missed it, it was just three days ago on the social media site, formerly known as Twitter, that's when an account called Terror Alarm, it flagged the phrase, Jesus Christ is Lord, as being an anti-Semitic statement. That's right, you heard me right. Terror Alarm is now flagging the phrase, Jesus Christ is Lord, as being anti-Semitic, and this despite the fact that 74% of the Christians here in America have nothing but love for the state of Israel. Uh, so then why would this phrase, Jesus Christ is Lord, set off this so-called terror alarm? Well, with this question in mind, it'll help you to know that the people in charge of terror alarm, they describe their company as being independent and self-funded by activists and journalists who are working on this project from several countries around the world. And according to them, they report only the facts, only the facts, and not a personal attitude toward the facts. Okay, that's interesting. So, so then, what are the facts? What, what are the facts that would lead them to alert the Twitter sphere uh, about the alleged anti-Semitism of those who would declare something like Jesus Christ is Lord? Uh, are the people who declare Jesus Christ is Lord, are, are they the ones stockpiling weapons as they prepare to wipe Israel from the face of the map? No, <laughs> no, that's not them. Are the people who declared Jesus Christ as Lord amassing troops on the border of Israel as they prepared to invade the land that the Lord gave to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Nope, nope, that's not them either. Uh, uh, what about the people, are the people who declare Jesus Christ as Lord using the UN to divide the land of promise according to their so-called two-state solution? Nope, <laughs> that's not them. So, so then what are the facts? What, what are the facts that have led terror alarm to flag the phrase, Jesus Christ is Lord, as an anti-Semitic expression? Well, with this question in mind, it'll help you to know that Terror Alarm actually uses proprietary AI, artificial intelligence, which was developed to collect all news from all media sources, including news websites, blogs, the deep web, the dark web, Telegram, Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, newspapers, magazines, TV channels, radio stations, and, and when legally possible, private messages between people. Their AI also monitors data from the Internet of Things devices, leaked or possibly hacked mail and sites, and it also uses data from intercepted communications obtained by some intelligence services when legally possible. Terror Alarm AI is constantly gathering all this data with minute-by-minute -minute updates to its quantum data depository. And from this depository of data, which they equate to 7 billion human brains, Terror Alarm's AI generates news or it makes predictions based on what's happening all around the world. Okay, so, so the AI at Terror Alarm, it gathers data from all around the world and then decides to issue warnings to the Twitter sphere so that the world might realize that those who proclaim the phrase, Jesus Christ is Lord, well, they're probably anti-Semites, which is to say that they're hostile and prejudiced uh, towards uh, the descendants of Israel. Uh, I guess this is due to the fact that the people who fire rockets at Israel from the Gaza Strip, you know, those are the ones usually heard chanting, Jesus Christ is Lord. And, and the terrorists there in Lebanon who are currently trying to produce chemical weapons for use against the Israeli military, they too are oftentimes heard chanting, Jesus Christ is Lord. And I'm sure you've heard the anti-Semites from Iran, you know, the ones who have sworn that they're going to wipe Israel from, from the face of, of the map. Yeah, those are the ones known for, you know, uh, burning the Israeli flag, all the while chanting, Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, oh wait, <laughs> I'm sorry, that I made a mistake. These are the groups that actually chant Allahu Akbar, which means Allah is great. Look, when Islamic terrorists burn Israeli flags in the streets, they're not proclaiming Jesus Christ is Lord. No, instead they chant Allah is great. And when Islamic terrorists en engage in jihad against Israel, they chant, Allah is great, not Jesus Christ is Lord. And knowing that these terrorists are the greatest threat to Israel, I can't help but to wonder, well, when is terror alarm going to warn us about the phrase, Allahu Akbar? Listen, 
The same is true here as we consider uh, the anti-Israel or anti-Semite groups that are currently present on college campuses. You might not know this, but anti-Semitism has actually been on the rise here in America, uh, especially on college campuses all across our country. And according to the research, these incidents really began to ramp up uh, and, and they ramped up 200 percent after Israel's 2021 conflict with the Palestinian Islamic organization known as Hamas. And what this means then is this, that the increasing amount of anti-Semite incidents happening on our college campuses all across America, it's not being caused by those who declare Jesus Christ as Lord. No, instead, this is being instigated by Palestinian activists who chant Allah is great. Now, with all this being the case, it seems to me that the AI there at Terror Alarm is actually helping us to see the anti-Christian bias that's currently occurring all across uh, the, the, the world. And with that being the case, I want to assure you that the phrase, Jesus Christ is Lord, is not anti-Semitic in any way. No, instead, the phrase, Jesus Christ is Lord, is actually based on the belief that the Lord Jesus is the promised Messiah of Israel, the son of David. For example, it's in John chapter 1 where we find a Jewish fisherman, his name is Andrew. Uh, he's going to find his brother, Simon Peter, in order to inform him about the arrival of the Messiah. And it's here in this passage found in John chapter 1 where Andrew declares this. He says, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. In other words, Andrew brought his brother Peter to Jesus because he believed that Jesus is the Messiah, which is to say he's the Christ. From this, we can see then that the phrase Jesus Christ is Lord, it's not an anti-Semite statement. No, instead, it's a statement of fact, which identifies Jesus as the promised Messiah of Israel. Further proof of my point can be found in the faith of a former Pharisee named Paul. And, and Paul actually took the time to present his Hebrew credentials. It's in uh, Philippians chapter 3, where he informs his audience that he was circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, he says, these I have counted for loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Now, here in these verses, we find this Jewish man named Paul. He's now proclaiming his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And while it's true that he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews, he was a Pharisee, he was a persecutor of the church, but then came the day when he found himself face to face uh, in, in some sort of vision uh, that, that he realized that Jesus Christ is in fact Lord. And then he began, uh, began proclaiming his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And seeing how this Hebrew of the Hebrews had no problem pro uh, proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord, well, there should be no doubt in our minds that the artificial intelligence at terror alarm is the one that's actually spreading anti-Semite propaganda as it portrays Christians as the ones who are terrorizing the children of Israel. And with that being the case, listen, I encourage you, we have to share the same passion that Paul had. And it was a passion that was based on the desire for every Jew and every Gentile to embrace the promised Messiah of Israel. Here's how Paul put it in Romans chapter 1. He declares this, he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first, and also for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, from this, we can see that Paul had a passion to proclaim the gospel message of Jesus the Messiah, so that both Jew and Gentile might be saved by faith in the cross of Christ. With this as the goal, let's get out there and share the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. And while there will be those who think that this is some sort of anti-Semitic message, I can assure you it's not. And I can promise you 
that the son of David is pleased with those who proclaim this gospel of grace. And knowing that the time is short, let's ask the Holy Spirit to empower us as we continue to fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.